What does that say? F U. Few. F U E something. Fuel. Ah, thought I would say fuck, but I don't know. Should I try again? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Nope. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Nope. The nope. lounge was sublime, a work of art. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Nope. 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 And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight to nope. the opposite door, and got back on track. Uh-oh. Oh, crap. No. I want to go back this way, please. Please. No. Game. Game. Why you do this to me? Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hope it coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I don't want to be in this guy's office. He sucks. Why why Stanley is the ceiling so office, tall? Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the key Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. I don't know why I that remembered the combo for that. He isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. No, not again! Stop it! Stop it, narrator! I don't want to hear this again. Shut up. Get out of here. I'll hide under the desk. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Oh no. It's another scary place. Not scary places. Make the scary places stop. Make this game stop. <laughs> uh, I got the good ending. I should have just left it alone. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Doing this again. Hopefully there's another way to go. I'm going. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret... Ah, I give up. <laughs> I don't want to sit through that. <sighs> Even though that's the good ending. That's like the one good ending. Telephone. Hello? Hi, Stanley. I uh, just wanted to leave you a message to let you know there's a few things I need you to pick up on your way home from work today. We need milk, cereal, dish soap, spaghetti, get a thing of sugar, some bread, and coffee beans, whichever ones you like. I'll give you a call if there's anything I forgot. Thanks, sweetie. See you tonight. What? That doesn't happen usually. And why am I standing on this desk? That's not supposed to happen. Phone! Get me out of here, phone! And why- why is she calling 434's desk, huh? 434! You've been with my wife! I don't even know if that's my wife. 434, I'll kill you! I'll murder you! In your sleep! A lot of people have the same mug in this office. I hate Mondays, I farted. When Stanley came to a set of two open... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, 
just to admire it. I just want to piss you off, narrator. Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the first, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. That's all that matters. I think that lift down there on the left goes to a place I don't so want to go to, so. Directions. It's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. I wonder, is there another place I could jump to? Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This you don't know anything me. about me, narrator. Your to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. Oh no, not this again. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. No, it's a lie. She's not real. I'm not picking up that damn phone. Not this time. Not this time. Stop ringing, please. How do I disconnect? As Stanley picked up the <gasps> phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? You're damn right. No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> Let me double check. I beat you, narrator! It's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. See, that's a lie. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. None of it means anything! How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait it's all second. pointless. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? It's a well, game! I that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional. Oh, no, 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 please. I've watched too many. Oh, Choice. God. It's the best part of being a real person. But no, it's if not. Using correctly can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. Why is this tie he so could spend big? Years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. Oh! Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. Did if I just you find what yourself the speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness! My goodness! I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. What? <laughs> when does this end? Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, is this a Fallout game? That in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant. Where's Pip Boy? And the should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video.
It doesn't make any ah, sense. What well, the f- you, oh! you may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. I can see but that. Don't worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. No. No, just plug it back in the phone. I'll talk to my wife and then I'll die. That's fine with me. Oh, I don't want to go here. What is this? Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> no. Please, no. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. What? Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. No! We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. I just want to die. I just want to die. <laughs> what does it all mean? What's the point of everything in this game? Other than to get really confused and have witty banter. Don't take the door on the left. Back to the correct ending. The story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. I don't agree with this. I don't condone where this is going. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What? Oh, never mind. It was always the left door. Ha <laughs> ha. Like it throw me no! out there. Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. What the hell is this? The di what? Oh, it's broken. <laughs> it's all this stuff. Oh, jeez, what the heck's happening? Everything's all contorted and gross. Oh no. Uh. No, oh, please. <gasps> oh! You, I can't believe after everything we talked about that you... My story, you've destroyed my work. Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? No, please. No. What's the answer? What do I do? We must do press I forward. Do I? No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. Don't do it. No. Oh, why? What's so? No. no. Oh. Oh jeez! Oh jeez! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! This place is scary. I don't like this place. Oh, I'm, I'm here. Get me out of here, narrator! Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. You. Who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine and you run it into the ground. What? Did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Now yeah, you're right. I'm self-centered, uh, and I'm a terrible person. My story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. 
is behave exactly as Stanley would. What? That means choosing responsibly <laughs> and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry. <laughs> oh! Is behave exactly as Stanley uh, would. Uh, that means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. <laughs> no. No. No, 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 it never ends, it'll never stop. Yeah, oh. a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Oh. No. He walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh.